phone. Thank you for joining us. And um, please be in chat. We hope to see all of you, those who are not watching. <clears throat> Today, I'm glad that I'm going to be able to hear to share to you a very important topic. My title of the sermon of today is Let It Go. When I mean let it go, it means truly letting something to move on. Why I choose this specific title for today is because all of us, 80% of our population are suffering from mental depressions. We are suffering from mental depressions that, that you don't even know it anymore. And the thing is that you don't realize that you are going through all these kind of depressions in your life. It's very important thing to know that I feel it's also important for the church to share on uh, this. As all of us are going through this, no one escapes. Why is it 80%? Maybe the 10% is the babies, and that 10% is all people with those in coma. Every, each and every one of us are suffering from mental depressions or stress without knowing it. It doesn't need to be symptomatic. It doesn't have to show that you are face. It will be a silent, very silent and minimal within you. That you don't realize that you are having it, but you are having it. How many of you say, I am fully okay, I don't have any mental depression, I don't have stress? Can anyone say that? Uncle. Yeah. <laughs> that means uncle is having the 100%, uncle will be both the 100%. Praise God, Uncle. But as you go through the, the sermon today, you will realize you are actually going through it. Well, one of the causes that causes for us to get into the mental depressions, the main cause is our work or business. When we concentrate too much in our work, we spend our time. That you're not able to get your me time. You're silently falling into it. You're too busy looking at your career and also your work. You forgot to treat yourself. You forgot to take your time for you. For students, they are so busy chasing the grades, they lose themselves. They have sleepless nights. For your business, you're always worried. What should I do the next week? What should I do next? If you have an employee, you are employing people, you have to pay them. But think about it. If you're a grab driver, you have to think about your income for next day. The moment you start thinking and think and think and think. It will lead you to overthinking, and this is cause of one of the mental depression. When I say mental depression, doesn't mean that you are actually at AD. No, right? No. It's a it's a condition that you begin to overthink a lot. You think too much. Family. You think the needs of the kids, of your parents the health of your parents and your family members. You are so worried in your life that you are not able to meet your family needs. The moment you think and think about this, you are also suffering from mental depression. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't mean you have to be someone mad or going under treatment or under medication for this. The moment you are too into it, you begin to lose yourself. Your family, your daily cause in your family, your house, your children, your husband, your wife, your parents, 
Because you think about them, you forget to think about you. Your finance. You are worried about your commitment financially on what you have to pay or what you have to do. You think about that. And you are so worried that to settle things about tomorrow or today. How am I going to roll this for this? How am I going to pay my uh, workers? Your relationship with your boss boss, with your girlfriend or boyfriend, your relationship with others, your friend, your bestie, your friend, betrayal. And the people you trust, they go behind you. These are the, some of the causes that you know, I know, are affecting us. And all of us are involved in any one of these. So we don't escape it. So Uncle, you get me? We don't escape it. You agree with me? No. No. <laughs> So Uncle says no. That means he's able to control his thinking. Then we thank God for that. And finally the community. The community will have been is the people you live with, your neighbor, your church, your members. They too can be the cause of your mental depression. Your commitment to the church, your commitment to ministry, your commitment to your neighborhood. And all you think and think and think what to do next. You sort of forget all thinking. Mental depression or stress leads to spiritual depression. And spiritual depression is a real thing. It's not something that you made up. It's not something that I made up today. It exists. That all of us are aware that there is something called spiritual depression. What is a spiritual depression? It's a science of spiritual depression. People and spirit often say they feel disconnected or cut from God. You might have some confusion or frustration about your faith. You feel unable to talk to God or believe God no longer, no longer hears your prayers. This is when you begin to give up. Because when you have spiritual depression, you feel that even the Lord doesn't understand you. You feel that even the Lord has broken his, uh, broken his hands with you, that, that, that he's forgotten you. They, they're not able to pray. They, they're not able to talk to him. And you can't hear what God is. Even you sit in the church, when the preachers are preaching to you, you'll not be able to connect because you somehow go into spiritual depression. A spiritual depression is a totally cut off of a relationship with God. It's a block that disconnects you from God. And this is something serious that you have to look into. And it's a real thing that you and I suffer it, even though we deny it. There's no denial in it. Spiritual plus mental depressions often leads to hatred. You begin to hate yourself. When you look at the mirror, you begin to hate yourself. When you look at your spouse, you begin to hate them. You begin to hate your members, church members. Sometimes you even begin to hate your family and your kids. You begin to hate everything about it. Everything about this life, you begin to hate it. You begin to look everything in a very bad way. Mental depression and spiritual depression leads you to giving up. You will not put effort into anything. You will just think of living things. 
you give up, you don't eat. Then surrender. You begin to lose yourself. You begin to lose yourself mentally. You begin to lose yourself spiritually. And you begin to lose yourself physically. That is why when you start to have mental depressions or um, spiritual depressions, you often begin to gain weight because it starts stressing Because you start to not to take care of yourself. Because you are, you are losing yourself so much that you don't care anymore. You set your substance of alcohol, alcohol or drugs. You begin to find alternative ways to relax any depressions. Medical. This is to relax you. And finally you become suicidal or even a murderer that you want to murder someone that you really hate, that really cost you losing yourself, making you giving up and hatred. And sometimes you say, why do I say to am I living? These are the things that we go through in our life on a daily basis, everywhere we go, work, church. Even in schools and in our college. But what is God saying to you today? What do you think God is talking to you? Do you think that He doesn't care that you are going through all this in your life? That you are you are suffering in this? That He is just abiding in you? That He leaves you and forsakes you? What is God saying to you? What do you think God is saying to you? The Lord is telling you to cast your burden on the Lord and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. He is there hearing you. He is there, he's really asking you to throw the burdens to Him. When we say the meaning of cast, what does it say? It's to throw away. Cast also means to assign. You assign the Lord to carry your burdens. You assign your faith to Him. You do not keep the faith with you. You throw it away. You toss it away. You need to assign the Lord to carry your burdens. Cast also means to throw or move something in a forceful way. That means you cannot keep hold or just push away your burdens. You have to be forceful. You have to force yourself. You have to push yourself to push and to assign the burdens that you carry in your life. The family, financial, your work, your studies, whatever we have mentioned earlier, and what are we going through? Assign it to the Lord. Surrender it. Because why cast the burden to the Lord? Why not drop it or forget it? When you drop something, it's still there. When you drop something beside you, when you drop your problem, you say, ah, I just drop it, I just leave it. But the problem is still there. And why not just forget it? Are we human are able to forget betrayal? Are we human are able to forget to take care of our family? No. You will not be able to drop or forget your burdens. That is why you have to cast it to the Lord. Because God is glad to carry your burdens. He does it gladly to lighten you. 
He's glad and he's loving to carry your burdens. He's enlightened to carry your burdens. So that we do not have to keep the burdens on us that we that we're not able to move. Trust your burdens unto the Lord. He is glad to carry your burdens. He's happy to carry your burdens. He's delighted to carry your burdens. In Psalms 34, verse 17 to 18 says, The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the broken hearted who rescues those who spirits are crushed. When you have spiritual depression, you feel that you are able to connect to God. But here the Lord says, He is close to the broken hearted. He is close when you are broken. He is there beside you, walking with you, with his arms open so that you will give your broken heart into his hands, that he will repair it. He is there walking, waiting, walking behind you, asking you to give his heart, to, sorry, to give your heart. He is close. The thing is, <laughs> our pride problems appears so big that we are not able to see that the Lord is close to us. He is there. Remember, Christ cares in everything. Even when you forget Him, He is there for you. We forget that the Lord is there for us. We are so busy handling things, working in our, uh, in our own efforts to settle things, to settle problems, to, uh, to repair relationships. We are so desperate to do things that we forget that Christ cares in everything and He never forgets you. Though you forget Him, He's there with you. No matter what, whatever effort we put without Christ, you will not be able to repair anything. God is always near the broken hearted. No matter how deep the pit or despair you are in, God can lift you up. Just as he did for David. God can set you back on the path towards hope and he will steady you whenever you start to stumble. Remember one thing in life that the place you fall, where you fall, is the place you should rise. You cannot fall on the north and rise in the south. You are only able to rise at the place that you fall. If you fall at your work, that's the place you need to rise. But with God, you cannot rise up with your own effort. We may tell, how come the non-believers are performing? No. We have something, an extra weapon or extra support that enables us to sustain. The place you fall is the place you rise. Wait. <sighs> He turned me and had me cry. He turned me on the side of him. This is David's testimonial. Wherever you fall, the Lord carries you. We can be in a deep mud. We can be suffering. Oh, suffocating. You may lose all hopes. But the Lord is telling you, I am able to carry you. I am not only able to carry your burdens. I am not only able to carry your problems. I am also able to carry you, to lift you up, to pull you out.
from whatever you are being stuck into. And it also provides a firm place to stand. Remember, the Lord is the rock of our life. It's the place that we should stand. It's the place that we, be, uh, we place our feet upon. Because it's a firm place. It's a steady place. And you cannot fall when you stand on the Lord. Because when you stand on the Lord, the rock of the Lord, He stands for you. You will not be buried. You will not be, be suffocated or be drunk when you stand with the Lord. Remember in something in life, God never told life will be easy. Never told you this thing so that we and me can have peace. Can we get the right now? Right? That's why you can't leave it. And I told you this thing so that me and my half peace in this world will have problems. But they can't have overcome the world. You may have peace because you are the one who have overcome the world. When you have trouble, you are able to overcome because you are with the successor, the one who succeeded, the one who won the world. Because when you follow, it's very simple in life, when you follow a successful person's footsteps in life, in real, in, in reality, in physical life, you will succeed. If you follow a blind person, you will end up hitting a wall. So, the Lord is, Jesus Christ Himself is a great testimony that you have seen and known that you have taken and overcome the world. You are a witty overcomer. When you are witty overcomer, you become an overcomer yourself. What should I do? Let it go and trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You have to let it go. Let it go to the Lord. Let it go whatever is burdening your heart. Let it go. Throw it away whatever is burdening you. If you are worried about your studies. Let it go. Do not leave your own understanding. If you are worried about your studies, don't overstrain yourself. You keep on studying and studying and studying. It will not be recorded in your brain. It will not. Because they are not only studying, but you are worried about the studies. There is something called worry to that. It is already a hindrance for you to record it in your mind. That by the way you are studying, you do not stay in your mind. Because the worry is coming along with your studies. Instead, ask the Lord for wisdom. Remember, the, the very important essence of life and ministry is wisdom. The fruit of wisdom. Wisdom will be able to guide you. So when you are worried about your financial Ask for God's wisdom. Don't go and ask for Lord, I need more money, give me money. No. It may be will happen. Depends on people around you the way to bless you. Ask the Lord the wisdom of you managing the financial. Because when the Lord starts to manage for you, you see that the cup overflows. Because the Lord is sufficient. Whatever the Lord gives you in your life, you will give sufficiently. You will not go lack. Often you always pray for financial breakthrough, for financial deeds, for financial help. But why don't we pray for the wisdom of managing the finance that we have? Some of us are working a fixed job with a fixed salary. 
How can you get the sun extra income? Suddenly, unless people bless you, people give you. But ask the Lord to give you wisdom to manage your finance. It will help you to sustain you, your family, and everything. The financial management. Let him go and come in the way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do it. When you cast something to the Lord, when you throw away something to the Lord, believe that it will be done. You don't say, Lord, take control and you still worry about it. You have to release it from your heart. Release it from your mind. That God is in control. Set it in the mind that God is in control. Fix it in your mind that God is in control. Say to yourself, God is in control. Because He will do it. Commit your face to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will do it. Commit. Let it go to the Lord. Let it go. Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind to Christ Jesus. Be anxious of nothing. Do not be anxious. Anxious leads you to anxiety. Anxiety leads to you insomnia. Insomnia leads to losing your mind. It leads to depression. The word of the Lord specifically I've told and told you, me and you, not to be anxious. Why are we not to be anxious? Because we already have someone. There's someone who's willing to carry our burdens that to that, that, that he's there to, to help you, to guide you. Why are you be anxious? You're in a safe place. You're safe. People outside that, non believers, they don't know that, 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 that such words exist in the Bible. They get anxious. They get depressed. But we Christians, we should know that what the Lord has commanded us. That do not be anxious. Yes, we are human, we are in flesh. We tend to be, be worried. I don't deny that because I worry sometimes. I get anxious to think about my job, uh, to settle my problems. How am I going to? But sometimes I just say, I drop it. I say, no, I have to take some time for my family, myself. Remember, the word of the Lord says, be anxious for nothing. Remember this word. This is an insurance that the Lord gives you. You are insured to be the Lord. It's very important for us to know that whatever we do, when we put God, ask for his wisdom, we have not need to worry. I'd like to show you some examples in the Bible. Because not only us, those who lived in the olden days throughout the history of the Bible, they too went to depressions. They too went into, into depressions. Abraham was willing to let go of his son, even though it was difficult for him, but God honored his hand and blessed him. The moment he was willing to let go of his son to obey the word of the Lord, he became the father of nations. He became the father of faith. Because Abraham was willing to let go the most difficult thing in his life. Which is his own flesh and blood. Remember when I said let it go, the certain things in our life that we need to let go. 
We need to let go of certain things in our life. It's difficult. It is something that is very hard for you to give away. This is been hindering your blessings. It can be something that you personally know. I would not like to tell it or you need to identify what are the things that you have to, it's difficult for you to let it go. Sometimes you need to be cut to be empty to be filled. The things that you need to feel so difficult to let it go and let it go for the Lord. He was sustained. Moses let go of degrading himself and God was with him. When God called Moses, he was degrading himself. Like sometimes most of us do. How can I do it? Who am I? But you forgot and you forget that the Lord is with you. The one is giving you orders. The one is holding you and sustaining you. The commanding you. The one supporting you is the Almighty Lord. Moses let go of degrading. He degraded himself. Who am I? Well, I was asking the Lord, who am I to do this? But the Lord said, I am who I am. Who am I? Who am I? You are the Lord's beloved child. Christ gave himself a sacrifice for you. Has given you all authority. The power is in your hand. The blessings is at your hand. How are you going to tackle it and make use of it? Don't degrade yourself. No matter who you are. Don't say you're nothing. Don't say I'm just a housewife. Don't say I'm just a banker. Don't say I'm just a normal church member. Don't say I'm a normal student. Don't say I'm not just a normal employee. Walk your walk like the king's child. Don't degrade yourself. I tell you something about me, about my job. When it comes to certain arguments, it comes to my manager, I sometimes I bring my arguments to him. I, I'm not afraid that he's a manager that, or I'm a branch assistant manager that I'm not working for him. No. When I have my points, my rights, I put it before the Lord. I say, Lord, I'm going to do this. So when I, I reason out, I fight, I talk, they give up. He said, okay, yeah, we got the points. Don't degrade. If I'm going to degrade myself, I'm going to enter depression. Because thinking, I feel like, oh, the management says this, I have to do this. Oh, because I don't like it, I have to force myself to do it. I'm not teaching you to rebel. I'm teaching you to be great. How to be great yourself. You are special. You are loved. And remember, the Lord wants to carry a burden. No one let go of shame and humiliation from others and stands firm on God's word. To build the up and his generation survived. Noah went through a lot of shame, a lot of humiliation. People teased him, said, what you're talking? Rain, water from the clouds, it's not going to happen. People said he's mad. People were mocking him, making fun of him. But Noah did not hold to him. Remember, Noah did not Hold to his shame and his humiliation. But he continued whatever the Lord instructed to him. He continued to do his work. The Lord has told him that he knows the Lord is with him and the promise of the Lord will come true. He kept strong, he was holding strong towards the word of the Lord. And what happened? He and his generation survived. Let go of your shame and humiliation. People may put you down. People that may have 
diss you. People will say, oh, when you sing, you sing like a frog. People may say, oh, when you talk, you talk nonsense. Or when you talk something, when you encourage something, say, oh, Lord, you cannot. People may humiliate you, but let me tell you, don't take it serious. Because the Lord doesn't take it serious uh, when people humiliate you. But then, He is there to lift you up in front of them. Do not worry. Do not be ashamed. Throw it away. Let it go. Another example. The right to let go of his fear of Ahab and Jezebel and God proved that he is the only God and he sent fire down from heaven and Elijah also slaughtered the prophets of Baal. You know, for a prophet, Elijah, he was his friend. He ran away, hid himself from King Ahab and uh, Jezebel and his king. He was so afraid that he will lose in life. He was so afraid that he'll be put to shame. But what happened? <laughs> when he let go of his fear after the Lord confronted him, when he started to believe in the Lord, he was successful. The Lord sent fire from heaven. And he slaughtered the prophets of Baha'i. He became a hero. Another example from the Bible that they take is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He provides a beautiful and powerful model for how to confront and let go fears in a way that realigns us with God. Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane. Each time he expressed his willingness to obey his Father's will. What is our will? What is our, the will of the Lord? The will of our Lord is for us to live a good life, for to save people, to spread His word. And Lord, God, the will of the Lord is also for us to cast our burdens to Him. See, it was the last moment of Jesus and His three disciples. He had anxiety. He was a human. He was anxious. Jesus was in agony. Jesus was also in fear because he was human, because he was faced a terrible torture. But he surrendered himself to the Lord because he knows that the Lord does not forget him, the God does not forget him, the God will sustain him. So you and I today remember that what we are facing today is not new. The generations, the heads, the examples of us before us have faced it with Christ Himself and was in a physical form. Let go of your problems. Let God handle them. Let go of your hurt and let God heal you. Let go of your fear. And let God sustain you. Let go of all of your worries. And let God bless you. Throw it away. Throw it away to the Lord. He wants to carry your burden. He wants to carry you. He wants to lift you up. He doesn't want to see you so heavy. He doesn't want to see you sleepless. You know, sometimes uh, we have parents. Do you experience that when you look at your child sleeping, you're so sleeping soundly, you're so loving that you embrace them, you kiss them. This is how the Lord sees you. He wants you to have a good rest. He loves you that much. He wants to embrace you when you're asleep. He's just sitting beside you. Let it go. Why are we keeping it to ourselves? If we are humans, we, we, and we love to see our child so sound asleep, so resting, and so the cute, beautiful way, so does the Lord. He's your father. He wants to see you in the way, rested. Not to be rest. Let it go. God is 
telling you today to be still. Don't get panicked. Don't run behind them. Stop stressing yourself on what is going on. Let me tell you, for stressing about work, work is not going to end. Work is not going to end. Stressing about financial problem, the financial problem is not going to end. Even though you retire, even though you are a millionaire, you have a financial problem. The financial problem centers can have no payment to do. Even your opinion and your bills to pay. Never settles. The problem never settles. Stop figuring out with your own understanding. Often, what we do, we humans, we dig a hole to cover another hole. Leading us to problem one another, one another, one another. We see a hole here, okay, but we do it all instead of we try to cover the hole. But we dig a hole here, and this hole will become a problem. We do it again and again and again with never ending. But the Lord is telling you, come to me, higher solution to cover the hole. Stop fighting for it because it is gone already. Success is yours. The Lord has overcome the world. He is your father. He has overcome. He has overcome. You are an overcome. You are a successor. It's yours. It's just there for you to declare it, to get hold of it. Never give up. God is saying to you, leave them to me to handle whatever it is. Leave it to the Lord. Cast your burdens to the Lord. He is there to handle every problem, everything. Another example of your own children. They will not be able to help themselves. We parents are able to help them. So does us. You would have grown up, you are elders. Leave that God to the handle. But if you're having things that you need to share or to talk, you are having difficulties of feeling disconnected to the Lord. Seek help. Don't be shy. Talk to your pastors. Or for a person that you are accountable for. Get a person, accountable person for you. That is trust. Preferably people, those are Christ, are able to advise you spiritually, physically, and mentally. Don't be shy to get help because if you think you are disconnected from God, you can't hear what God telling you. When you share it out, the Lord will talk to people. Cast your burdens to He is willing to carry. Be still and know that I am God. <laughs> Be still. Don't let the oceans, the waves of the life, to flush you away. The waves of the life will carry you away, far away from the Lord. The waves of the life will push you away from the Lord. The ways of the life will drag you away. Be still and know that He is God. He is there, holding you, sustaining you, and He has set your feet upon the rock, which is firm, and you will not be shaken. Amen? Let's all surrender ourselves, carry our hands, and save the Spirit together. Open and speed it out. Follow me. One, two. Heavenly Father, forgive me for the times I have to try to take things into my hands. Help me just to be still and let you be in control. Lord, I surrender it all to you because I know you will work things out for my good. I pray you 
I pray for your will to be done. In Jesus' name. Last my now, please. Keep calm, stay chill, and let it go. You are there. The Lord is there for you. And today, if there's anything you want to release, if there's anything you want to throw away, I want to let it go. I encourage you to come forward today. The healing ministry team, myself, will pray for you because those who need healing, not only physically, we speak about healing, it's not only physical. Healing comes from mental, mentally, also for emotional. If you're caught in anything, that is been bringing you or closing you down. Surrender and pray yourself. And come and come in. The pastor say we'll pray for you. And um, as the team plays this song, come forward and surrender yourself. Is there anything that you want to pray and let it go? Throw it today. Go back, go back today with a with the right heart. With the right heart. Do not go back heavy. Throw it away. Have some peaceful sleep. God is telling you to give you rest. As the, as the song goes on, the bass goes on. Because we remember there is power in the name of Jesus. And it breaks every chain. With a loop. As the song goes on, come in front and surrender yourself. <laughs>